What's happening guys, it's Abhina from Phone Bunch and welcome to our full review of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 3. Now I've been using the Redmi Note 3 for about a week now. This is the 2GB RAM variant with 16 gigs of onboard storage. I also got to play with the 3GB variant for a little while, so my thoughts would include both. Coming to specs, the Redmi Note 3 has a 5.5 inch 1080p display, Snapdragon 650 hexa core innards, with a 16 megapixel rear camera, a 5 megapixel front camera, and solid metal build with a fingerprint sensor. But let's talk about build first. On the right, you have the volume rocker as well as the power button. Both are sturdy, they offer good feedback and don't wobble even a little bit. Moreover, the sides are rounded which make the phone fit better in your hands. Looking at the top, you can see the audio jack, a noise cancellation mic and yes, an infrared blaster as well. Now the infrared blaster does work well, the included Mi Remote app also does work fine but I don't find much use for this feature anyways, but again you guys might disagree. Now let's get back to build. On the left you have the hybrid SIM card slot so you can either use two separate SIM cards or one SIM card and one micro SD card. Now we were able to use up to 64 gigs of storage, probably 128 gigs will also be supported. At the bottom you'll find the micro USB data syncing and charging port and the primary microphone. Which now brings me to the back, you have those symmetric circles which are center aligned and they look absolutely perfect. That 16 megapixel camera sits there along with the dual tone LED flash, fingerprint sensor and you have the speakerphone at the bottom. The back is again made out of metal with plastic at the top and bottom for antenna coverage. And talking about that fingerprint sensor, it's absolutely swift. It's very accurate and works as good as any flagship even if you put in the Nexus 6P or Nexus 5X in that race. Coming to the front. You have a 5 megapixel camera and you can see that notification LED glowing right there. You also have proximity and light sensors. And just below that display, you have capacitive buttons which do light up. And talking about that display, it is a very sharp panel. It is color accurate and you can even tweak the color settings a little bit if you don't like its natural reproduction. Moreover, you have a reading mode available so it filters out the blue light and you can read the phone easily at night. Now I know there is a lot of confusion surrounding what kind of display protection is available on the Redmi Note 3. Sadly, I can't clear that. We haven't heard anything from Xiaomi on that front. But I can tell you one thing. In the time that I used the device, I had keys in my pocket, I had coins as well and the display didn't get scratched. Moreover, it does have some kind of oleophobic coating as well. So fingerprints can be easily wiped with just a clean cloth. Which brings me to another good point about this device called quality. I didn't have any issues there, network reception was great, I had 4G coverage throughout. It supports both Wi-Fi bands as well, which is again a great boon especially at this price point. Even GPS worked out great in the time that I used the device and you have that magnetic field sensor, a gyroscope, pretty much everything that you can count on. So lots of sensors are available on this device as well. Now smartphone photography has become a real thing and the Redmi Note 3 doesn't disappoint especially if you have good light outside. There is a manual mode available here where you can control ISO and white balance. You have good shutter speeds here and the camera does focus in very quickly. There are some filters baked in as well. You have manual exposure control too. You can just tap and control the exposure. You can take slow motion videos, capture time lapses as well. And here's the kicker, you can record 4K videos with this camera as well, although you would have to use the Google camera app. And even the front facing camera did a pretty decent job, although images did turn out slightly noisy. And coming to that rear camera, when there is good amount of light, it takes very good shots. Great bokeh effect here due to that f2.0 lens and color reproduction is simply superb here. Moreover, it captures quite a lot of detail because of that 16 megapixel sensor. And again, in outdoors where there's a lot of light, this camera captures quite a lot of detail. Even HDR mode works great here. Solid dynamic range, you can distinguish between shadows and everything very easily. And you can see the amount of detail captured by this camera. This is a 100% crop shot. But when you come indoors, 
there's quite a bit of noise introduced into the environment. Yes, the images do become a bit hazy, it loses focus and details as well. You can see that here too. But overall, this is still a very good camera. You can see this video as well. It looks very crisp at 1080p. And here's an upscale slow motion video. Just have a look. So overall, this camera does handle exposure well, whether it be in videos or even in photographs. But low light performance does leave a little bit to be desired. But given the price point, this is one of the better cameras. Now from better cameras, let's get to music. And audio quality through the headset jack is really great over here. I use Xiaomi's own headset with the Redmi Note 3 and really sounded very good. Even the speakerphone is decently loud and it doesn't crackle at full volume. You can customize the sound profile according to your own headset that you have plugged in. You can also control it through an equalizer. FM radio is also supported with stereo FM recording. So yes, plenty of options when it comes to multimedia consumption. Moreover, this 5.5 inch display does a great job while you are watching local videos or on YouTube. Everything looks sharp and crisp. And all of that runs on MIUI 7.1. We also got a recent update of 120 MB, but that was just stability improvements. Overall, the performance is really swift even on this 2GB RAM variant. We didn't notice any lag, apps did open up quickly. You have those MIUI customizations like themes. You have your notification shade right up top with the music player again right at the top. And there are some new things which we'll talk about in a very short while. But getting to settings, you will see that we are still running on Android 5.1 Lollipop. Yes, that is quite a bit behind when it comes to Android updates. And on the 16 gig variant, you will get about 10 odd gigs when you get the device. USB OTG is also supported and apps cannot be moved to the external SD card, which is common to all MIUI based devices. And if we come to RAM, you can see that we have 700 odd MB available when all the running tasks have been cleared. Which brings me to some of the features that are available in MIUI. The first is this one. You can hide folders and use your fingerprint to access them. So all you need to do is check on hide and it won't be available through any file explorer. We have a different file explorer right here and you can see that it's not accessible. And all you need to do is just swipe down from the top in the default MIUI file explorer and you have access to it using your fingerprint. That's a pretty neat trick to hide your confidential documents or well, anything that you want to. But still, the fingerprint sensor is not that well baked into the entire OS. While adding Google accounts or any account, you would still have to enter your PIN. And even the lock apps option prompts you to add a PIN and then a pattern instead of using the fingerprint sensor by default. So yes, fingerprint integration still does need a little bit of work with me UI. Now still continuing with that fingerprint sensor, Xiaomi at the launch event had said that you would get app lock functionality and the ability to use the fingerprint sensor to capture selfies or take photos with the rear camera. Those features haven't yet made it to the retail unit as well. But Xiaomi says that they would be introduced in a later OTA update. So when those become available, we'll do an update video on that as well. And now let's get to performance. In general, this phone performs blazingly fast. Web browsing worked out great. We didn't have any issues there. But yes, every third or fourth app reloads, including the launcher itself, because there's not a lot of free space available on the device. And therefore, RAM management has to be a bit aggressive here. But that doesn't mean there is any lag on this device. This phone performed great in gaming as well. You can just see here, we played Asphalt 8 at full settings and there was no lag. It performed brilliantly and moreover this phone doesn't heat up with extended use. The maximum temperature I saw was somewhere around 43 degrees and that's just about it. We also played Nova 3. There was slight lag or frame drop rather at times but that was just about it. In general, great gameplay on the Redmi Note 3. Which brings me to another crucial point, especially on the Redmi Note 3 battery life. It's simply stunning. I was able to get through one and a half days of use easily with this device, but the battery does take three hours to charge. Yes, it supports Qualcomm Quick Charge 1.0, but still it is quite slow by today's standards. 
But once that 4050 milliampere battery is charged, you can go about your day without having to worry about battery life at all. And really the best thing that I found about this device apart from excellent performance is how good it feels in hand. That massive 4050 milliampere battery doesn't make this phone hefty for some reason. That 5.5 inch display can still be used in one hand and you feel comfortable using this phone for long hours. So kudos to the design and ergonomics on this device. The fingerprint sensor works great and the camera does a pretty decent job as well. So all I can do is give two thumbs up to the Redmi Note 3, it's real value for money in this price segment. Now that said, which variant should you get? I would say go for the 3 gig RAM variant because you get that massive 32 gigs of internal storage. So you can even use those two separate SIM cards and don't have to think about adding a micro SD card. But if you're very, very tight on budget, you won't be disappointed with the 2 gig RAM variant as well. Well folks, those are my two cents about the Redmi Note 3. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions about this or any other device, do mention those as well. If we left something out, do tell us that too. Thanks for watching and as always, have a great day.